So I'm going to go ahead and mute out and um, we'll get going. So this week was uh, an incredibly difficult week. I, on um, Tuesday, I had a call from my daughter's school that my daughter was going through some, some issues at school and I really had to pull away from my business and really make it about family and, and being there for my kids. Um, on Wednesday, I blew out my back at CrossFit and thought it would be a wonderful idea to go to Pier 1 and shop before my mom gets here because when my mom gets here, I have all these crazy expectations that everything has to be perfect. Like I, I needed to, with a blown out back, go shopping for matching hand towels for the bathroom. While I was opening the, the box with the curtain, I stabbed myself in the hand. So it has been a crazy week. So I told Ed, I'm like, Ed, I am seriously like crying over like an ant that just crawled into the house. Like I just, I just cried. So I told Ed, like, before I have a nervous breakdown, I'm just going to take off Thursday through Sunday. I'm like, just watch my back. If anyone needs something, cover for me. And of course, Ed is Ed, and he always helps out, and he's a good friend. But I thought how um, incredibly grateful I am that I get to pull away, that I get to stop what I'm doing, that I get to focus on my family, and that I really get to take care of the things that are necessary. And what I realized this week is that you really can't operate from an empty place, right? So if you're, <laughs> well, I did get an enrollment this week, so <laughs> last minute. But um, you can't operate from an empty bucket. You know, and if you're, if you're feeling just mentally exhausted, mentally stressed out, if you're feeling like life is getting like the best of you and things are getting crazy and you've got a lot of toxic relationships in your life, I have to tell you guys, you got to cleanse. Go back and do a quick nine day system. The whole beauty of this program is that you can change stuff around in nine days. It doesn't take a year for you to fix it, Right. So here comes my ex-husband walking over to the car and he's like, am I getting her September 26th and what time am I picking her up? And I was just like, you know what? This week is really not a good week to talk about it. And you're allowed to have a bad week. You're allowed to have a bad day. You're allowed to take off and be present for your family. I'm sure Jean Jean Jeanette forgave me. I'm sure Ed forgave me. I'm sure that my team will show me some, some uh, grace. And, you know, that's what I want you guys to really think of. We're going to talk tonight about overcoming fears um, and limiting beliefs. And, and Lisa's going to co-host with me. But I have to tell you... Um, Doing a, a quick nine-day program, um, getting rid of toxic people, taking a day just to freaking go to like a 48-hour yoga retreat, or just do something that makes it about you. Next week, I'm going to Super Saturday, because we all know that cleanse juice is, is that going to an event is like cleanse juice for the soul, right? It lights you up. So sometimes we all need a recharge. So if you're feeling depleted, if you're feeling exhausted, if you're feeling like, shit, I'm losing my spark, it's okay. It's okay to step away for two days, for four days, and figure out what lit you up again. And then just talking to people about my feelings and what a stressed out week I have and how one, and people are like, how much did you make this week that you did nothing? And I'm like, well, I still cycled, you know, three digits. And they were like, damn, that's the amazing part of, of this whole thing is that you can fill your bucket, you can take care of your family, you can support your loved ones if they're going through a crisis. Isogenix is, um, it's my life, but it's not my whole life, right? You know, I hear a lot of people in the company and, and Kathy Coover say, God, family, and Isogenix. So if you forgot what that spark is, what that passion, what that thing is that ignites you, go back and look. And today on my executive call, I mean, I, I really forced myself to, to take a good look. So I want to show you guys, I don't know if you can see my screen. I don't know if I hit the share button. Hang on. Let me shut off all those dirty messages from Josh Dunsky. I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, here we go. 
on this day, right? So um, this will show you what took place a year ago. Um, Jeanette, can you see my screen okay? Okay, wonderful. So sometimes, right, you have to remember, right, the longer you're in this business, sometimes you forget. Sometimes you forget the hard work you put in to get here. Sometimes you lose that, that sensitivity factor what, that a new person's going through. Somebody told me she was hungry last week, and I said, well, deal with it. I mean, <laughs> you know, you, you've, you've got to go back. And, and you really have to remember where you started. So this is me a year ago, taking my kids to the mall for a play date. I mean, there was a time that I didn't have the $15 to pay for this stupid dog to ride around the mall for five, seven minutes. You know, just looking back, having the ability to put my kids in activities because of network marketing, being consistent, consistently posting, sharing the results, this is a big deal. This family released 77 pounds. You know, this was Blitz last year. Somebody messaged me, did you send us mustaches? And I wrote, I guess you didn't get the sombreros yet. <laughs> what, other, what other kind of business can you have this much fun with? You know, and you just, I'm, I'm looking at the results. I was posting people's results. Am I doing that now? No, maybe I need to start doing that again. Go back and look and see what, where you started and how you started. If you don't burn for your dream, your dream will burn away. So I obviously I was listening to a lot of self-development. Look at this stud. This is when Ed Golden hit 1,200 members on his team. That was a big deal then. He's up to 10,000 members now. But who on our team is just hitting 1,000 members? Are we taking time to celebrate them for their little achievements? So somebody sent this to me. Thank you for believing in me. You know, look, go back and look. And then I, I was really looking like this was me working in my tiny Brooklyn apartment. This was one of my neighbors, Erica Stone, who's still a team member. Maybe I want to message her and express gratitude and say, you know what, girl, three years later and you're still in this with me. It's very humbling to look back in, at your journey. And this is me posting my results. And, and I see the vulnerability in this post. So I want to look. I want to evaluate. I want to um, become aware of what built my identity, who I am today. You know, I, and I was honest. Some weeks I was happy, other weeks I thought the progress was slow, but I felt and I saw the changes in me. Uh, my skin was clear, I didn't have colds, my hair got thicker, I, I didn't suffer from migraines anymore. You know, um, it, just being vulnerable. And it made me look at my post today and say, is it something that I'm, that I'm doing today? Or have I gotten so far away from where I started that I really need to go back and, and relive it? So. This was a, a very good refresher for me this week. And then someone, um, they used to do the ISA FYI, like the live calls. And I was recognized for top enroller, 16 enrollments when I, when I started. So I was like, man, I was working. I was having those conversations. I was really, you know, doing the do it four years ago. And another thing that I looked at, and you know, you might recognize some of these names. These were all the people who, who hit three star golden circle with me. 90% of the people on this list are millionaires now. And that made me want to share this with my people. Because if I can tell my friends, Inga, Jen, if I could say, look, just hang in there. Just keep working. Look at where Jessica Johnston is in four years. She's earning seven figures a year, a year. So, you know, it, it really is about remembering where you started, how you started, because the longer you're in this, sometimes you forget. You forget what other people are going through. You forget the struggles that they lived, and you need to be there. You need to be right there with them if you're going to make a difference. So when someone tells me that they don't like the shake, you know what? Let's figure out together how we can make it better, right? And Jeff brought up a wonderful point today, and he's like, 
people are always looking for that business builder, that business builder. If they don't post on week one, you're like, that's it. You know, she's not going to be a business builder. But Jeff brought up a solid point today, and he said, getting business builders depends on you being an amazing coach, right? Because if you're a great coach and you're with someone and you're by their side and you're helping them and you're really making sure that they love their program, you're going to get a big I don't think, well, I, I can't say none of us, but I feel like majority of us came for the products. How many of you guys came for the products? Didn't care about the business, maybe even knew nothing about the business. That was definitely me. Oh, I was a terror. I started with a nine day and I was ready to jig her because she asked for my social. I was like, I don't know who the hell this lady thinks she is, but I'm not giving my, I was one of those, you know? So really remembering where you came from. So tonight, um, I just wanted to start that off and just say, you know what? It, it, you're not going to be perfect. It's not going to be four years of perfection. And if you don't get frustrated and if you don't cry and if you don't stress out over your, or your business, you're really not doing it right. So after taking a few days, I'm back. I'm back. I invited a, a friend over. We're going to do a blitz day tomorrow. We're just going to get on the phones and go crazy because I'm back. It, it made me sick to look at my calendar and see zero appointments, but I'm also very thankful I could have been there for my daughter when she needed me the most, right? And, and that's something that we have to be very thankful for. So let's start with overcoming fears, shall we, Lisa? Okay, yes. So overcoming your fears is really developing an awareness for them, right? You don't, you, you're not going to be able to nip it in the butt if you don't know that you have a problem. So you want to start identifying your fears. You want to write them down. You want to be really specific. Don't just say, I'm scared of, you know, success. What is it about success that scares you? Are you scared that you're going to piss it all away like your dad did? Or what? I mean, you got to get very, very clear awareness. Before you can begin overcoming your fears, you really have to be aware of what havoc they're causing in your life. So some fears would be the anxiousness, the anxiety of calling a new prospect. Another fear would be fear of rejection. Where is that coming from? Why? Maybe my whole life I've been rejected. Maybe a boy rejected me and didn't take me to the prom. You know, these, these fears, fear of sales. What are my friends and neighbors going to think of me? Um, fear of losing my friends, fear of hearing the word no, fear of failure. So getting really, really um, clear on what you're scared of and, and, and identifying um, where these fears have come from. If it's fear of hearing the word no, where does, where does this come from? Have you been told no a lot in your life? Why do you care what people think? Have you ever been ostracized by friends? Did somebody ever make you feel small? Most of the fears that we have, um, they've come from somewhere. Somebody put this shit on us. You know, when, when you're young and you're growing up and you're dancing in a tutu in the middle of li your living room like you are a star, you know, that's how all kids grow up. So something happens, right, until society gets a hold of them and somebody crushes them. Maybe mom said, are you going to go out of the house looking like that? And maybe that hurt you. Maybe that broke you, you know. So you have to realize that when you were a child, right, you, you didn't have any of these fears. These are things that we kind of picked up along the way. But these fears come from a seven-year-old self, a 12-year-old self, where maybe you started thinking, I'm, I'm not good enough. So how do you get over fear? Certainty, right? Certainty. You have to be a, like, like the same way that you're a, a child and um, you didn't know how to tie your shoes, but after certain um, so many attempts and you try and you watch YouTube videos and then somebody gave you the information, you, you watch somebody demonstrate it, eventually you did learn how to tie your shoes, right? Um, at first you didn't tie them well, <laughs> but you kept doing it over and over and after a number of attempts, 
um, you really started to gain some certainty. Once you started gaining certainty, different things started changing, right? When you become confident, right? Let, like, let's say you know you're really good at something. Like, I know I'm really good at bike riding. So when I talk about bike riding, my words are different. I'm going to take this 30 mile run and I'm going to crush it. Ed will laugh at me and he's like 30 miles. I do a hundred. But you're, when, when you're certain about something, your words start to change. Your posture starts changing. When I get on that bike, I don't sit there like a schlub with two hands. I got one grip. I got my cell on the other. I'm like, you know, riding like I know what I'm doing. Um, and it really is that belief. But that's going to come from discipline, right? It's going to come from doing it over and over. If you just try to tie your shoelace once and never tried it again because you said, I suck at this, um, you would never get it. You know, people, um, they, they don't understand how someone could have enrolled so many people or how someone could make so many consultants. But I'll tell you how. It really comes from discipline and doing the do until eventually you do learn the skill set. We don't start out with the skills. The skill set comes from the doing over and over and over. Practice will make you better at it. And for, for what you have in, in lack of confidence in that area, that will come. The confidence will come the more you practice and the more you do it and the more daily discipline that you have. And really, once you get the, the hang of it, that's when you will start being really good at it. I don't think anyone comes in as a great network marketer. It's either some people are nervous and, and afraid and they let that fear kind of cripple them and other people are just not afraid. So they take more chances. I don't think that... Um, Jen has a, a better advantage than I do. I don't think that Monique um, is, is, is uh, better or, or, or less greater than, than somebody else. I just think that it really is a lot of that fear that dictates how we behave. Because when Susan Sly stood on stage and she did that presentation and she said, okay, Tracy O'Malley, how many people have you spoken to? And Tracy said, 700. How many did you sign up out of those 700? She said, 100. I mean, really, the percentage was, was low. You know, they're not signing up 80 to 90 of the conversations. I think the people who face their fears just have more conversations. And it doesn't mean that they're not scared. They're all scared. But I think that the desire is so much greater than the fear, that they're willing to be uncomfortable. I was on a great call today with Jennifer Levine, and she said, man, I, I, I stepped on the other side of fear. And she said, it was exhilarating. I want more of it. It was like a high, because all this time she was dictated by fear. And even something that seems minor to some of you, like having a launch party, was a big freaking deal to her, right? But as you step out, as you get comfortable with facing that fear, it will become easier and easier on you each and every time. But it's a matter of really, I guess, getting clear on your why, on, on being disciplined, do the do every day. And like I pointed out, you know, you're allowed to have a bad week. You can have a bad day. But a good coach, a great network marketer is not going to stay down. They're going to wipe the dust off their elbows and knees, and they're going to get back in the game and say, I forgive myself. I'm going to show myself a little bit of grace, and I'm going to get back into it. Um, so let's, Lisa, I'm going to pass it over to you, and then I have some slides to, to share. Let me, are you able to unmute? Yes, I did. Okay, awesome. That was incredible. Um, I I don't think it was an accident that um, that this subject matter um, has my name attached to it. Um, I am one. I'm an open book, and two, um, I have faced so much uh, garbage in my life, and um, I have most certainly let fear and anxiety and depression and, and just 
being scared hold me back in many, many ways. And, um, you know, I think fear is what really leads us to our limiting beliefs. So, you know, to, to talk a little bit about that, um, you know, our limiting beliefs are the, are the things that are, are constraining us, are holding us back from doing the things that, that we're not doing. Um, and, you know, one of the things that you can, what you can do in this um, situation is, is kind of take, take inventory of what your fears are and what your limiting beliefs are. Like, like Angela said, you know, be aware of what they are first and foremost. One of my favorite things to do, oh, I shouldn't say favorite, but one of the things that I do as a mechanism to, to kind of overcome fears and limiting beliefs is when I have a visceral reaction to something, like if some, if Josh tells me something and it makes me angry, I stop and I find out why is this making me so angry? What's going on that I am this upset about this? Because he could have just told me your shirt's purple. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's blue. And I could be so livid that it doesn't make sense. So I take inventory and, and I sit back and I go, okay, why am I having this reaction and really sit and, and, and think on it. Right. Um, in this industry, a lot of people will get stuck. They, they have the fear, they have the limiting belief, and then they just stop. They get absolutely stuck. Um, they're procrastinating too much. They're saying, I don't have time. I don't have enough resources. It's too late for me to do this. Everybody else is way, way further ahead of me. It's way too late for me. Um, I have too many responsibilities. There's too much on my plate. Um, and I have no clue who I am. So how am I supposed to do this, right? Um, or I don't know where to start. So all of these things are part of having a limiting belief system. Um, and then we also have, like Andrew was talking about, who, we've, who we are based on our childhood. Every single person has, has an imprinting in them of, of, of the type of person they are and how they show up in the world because of um, some stuff that, that they could have gotten in their childhood. Um, if you have an alcoholic parent, you could have extreme control issues. You could also have um, issues with trying to make everything perfect and make everything right because you always tried to do that for your alcoholic parents so that they would be happy. There's all kinds of things that come into play in, in your life. And if you really sit and think about what's going on when you, when you get to this place of fear or lack or scared, scaredness, um, you can kind of look back and, and start to think of, of what may be causing that, um, that, that response or that feeling for you. Um, one of the other things, we were brought up certain ways, right? We were trained to go to school, get a job, go, or go to, go to high, finish high school, go to college, get a job, go pay bills. And in this, in this industry, we're now taught, no, 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 no. Work for yourself, work it all in, make, make your time your own, and, and work for a different kind of life where be happy every day and, and live in abundance and and do exactly opposite of what we were trained to do as as children growing up so it's kind of a, a unprogramming so of course the, these limiting beliefs come in you're like well no way am I gonna think that I can do that when this is how I was raised and that was you know 20 30 40 years of my life where that is ingrained in my head and now I'm supposed to think outside the box it's not that easy to change. Um, Angela actually had a, a funny thing happen that, that I think is a great example here. Um, and, and it's happening with us too, because we decided to you know, try to convert to being vegan and Angela had put it on um, social media with her kid's response and they were all crying and upset and she actually got, a, she got what did the cop, somebody called the cops or reported due to the news because it's child abuse. And it's really, it's funny because when we were you know, telling my parents that you know, we're not eating meat and the kids aren't eating meat and dairy. And all. Well, what are they going to eat? And I'm like, well, what do you mean? What are they going to eat? Well, vegans don't eat anything. Like, well, yes, they do. There's plenty of food, fruits, vegetables, anything that's not meat. There's plenty of food out there. But it's a limiting belief system where people, you know, are just in a moment where they just don't understand all of the situation yet. And nobody, you know, this is, it's a perfect example of this because we are not ever coming to the table with isogenics and saying, 
I'm going to force you to understand this. We're coming to the table and telling them, here's what we've got, right? And this is what I want to present to you. But not everybody's going to want it. Not everybody's going to believe what you're talking about right away because they have their set of belief systems. You know, I can have one person in one part of my life say, you need to eat meat. And the other person saying, fruits and vegetables are where it's at, you know, and it's just a part of who we are. And we're not trying to change anyone. What we are trying to do is work on ourselves so that we can overcome some of these beliefs and we can get to the place where we want to be. Um, and my best advice on that is to just love yourself first. Get really in touch with who you are. If there's something going on, a, a belief system that, that is standing in your way, find, a, find a, a resource for it. I'm reading a book on ADHD right now and how it relates to marriage, and it is incredible. And it is helping me so much on, on a set of beliefs that I had, and now it's opening my eyes to so much that, oh my gosh, like it's amazing when you put the time into yourself and really get in tune with what's going on, the, the doors that can open and even, even windows, anything can open that can help you just see a little bit more clear and a little bit more of what's possible. A limiting belief is just you don't have enough information yet. And it is so easy to overcome just by flooding yourself with that more information. Um, Angela, I'm going to hand that back over to you because awesome. figure it's a good time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me do a little bit of screen share. Oh, what the heck is that? Okay, so um, uh, Lisa, can you see my screen? Yes, okay. Yes. Uh, let's see if I can enlarge this. Okay, um, what is fear? Fear is basically imagined bad outcomes, and it's based on past experience, instinct, in, in, instruction, instruction, does that say instruction? I haven't had enough few shots. But basically your brain is seeking security to avoid pain, right? You're kind of um, not going to do that, that thing that you're supposed to do. You're, you're going to start avoiding all sorts of situations. Um, it's meant to help us, but it often, often hurts us and holds us back so much right so we always have to remember that everything you want is truly on the other side of fear and that's just not a cute phrase it really is true i mean you know jen said it today i felt so um brave i felt so exhilarated and it makes you think what the f was i so afraid of you know but unless you go out there and unless you try to do these things magic is not going to happen in a safe zone so what are some things that we're afraid of, right? Fear of rejection really comes from your caveman brain. It's a primitive brain that, that really set us up for survival, hunting and surviving. It's instinctual. It, it really um, doesn't help us in any way having this fear. It really does limit your connection with others. I mean, think of children on a playground. They're so free. Adults are envious that you can just get in a sandbox and just grab a shovel and start playing with five other kids. And I'll tell you why fear is bad, because number one, it requires a lot of effort to be afraid. It sucks the freaking life out of you. People who are always living in an, uh, a state where they're addicted to disappointment, where they're frustrated, where they're scared, they have very low energy in the way they talk, in the way they behave. Fear narrows our awareness. If you are constantly scared of everything, you are never seeing the opportunity that life has to offer. It blocks your creativity. You're, not, you're, you're too scared to go out there and try everything. And how the hell do you know what you're good at unless you try everything, right? It stifles your action. It makes you feel ashamed. If you don't beat fear, it will beat you. And I think a lot of us can agree with that that so much of us have been crippled by the what ifs and, and, and the, that fear inside of us. How to recover from it? You know, Lisa gave great tips. Reasoning, self-talk, write down what you're afraid of. Awareness, you know what gets you not to be afraid? Action, activity, being clear on your goals 
And I can be scared shitless, but I'm going to do it regardless, right? Because my family is dependent on me. So I'm not scared to prospect. I just don't have time. I need to help my team. I don't have a warm market. I can't afford this. I don't have time to go to an event. I lose motivation. I'm disorganized. I mean, this is all nonsense, right? That you're just not facing what you're afraid of. These are all excuses to not take action. And I think a lot of us do this. You know, you're not working because you're not organized. Pick up the freaking phone and go in the bathroom. You know, it, it's really, you have to become very real. And I'm not picking on anyone. I want us to get over this bullshit because we're keeping ourselves from being the best producers that we can be. Um, what's the worst thing that can happen, right? This is how you reason the fear away. Will I die? Will someone curse me out? Will I become homeless? Will I lose my job? Will most people tell me no? None of this stuff is true. None of this stuff happens. And people are actually very nice, especially when you're coming from a place of service. So, you know, Jimmy Smith always says that no isn't N-O. It just means that people just don't know yet. Right? It's not their time. It has nothing to do with you. Set goals to get no's because for every 10 no's you get, you're going to get a yes. Um, learn how to handle objections. Increase your tolerance. I heard a wonderful, um, I'll get into that in a second, but how, you know, talking to yourself in a positive way. Don't ever say words like, I need. You don't need. You know, you're either in action or you're not. Need sounds very desperate. You don't need an enrollment. You don't need to get to three star. You deserve it, right? I'm brave. I'm confident. I own it. Um, no's don't bother me. They lead to a yes. Rejection brings success. People like me. People love isogenics. I'm going to be an executive, right? These, this is from a different company. And look at this. Even people there have the same fears that people here have. It's a human thing, right? So this is really about, you know, I, I think of the, the waitress in the restaurant and how she offers coffee to someone. And, you know, if a person is having breakfast and they've had two cups, they might tell her, no, thank you. I don't think the waitress runs to the bathroom and cries every time someone denies her a cup of decaf. You know, it just, it, you have to really rationalize it. When someone is saying no, they're not saying no to you. So um, a lot of people stay stuck in that state and we really have to get over it. Being addicted to, to disappointment, keeping yourself contained in limiting beliefs, um, ha seeing objections uh, as rejection is the silliest thing in the world. If somebody tells you that the price is too high, it's part of your job to explain why this is the most valuable thing you can get, right? But if you prepare yourself, if you know what people are going to say to you, boom, boom, you're ready. You're ready for that math test, right? If you know your seven times table, you're going to ace it every time. And how do you know? Practice. Get familiar with listening to podcasts on how to handle objections. Read things about, you know, freeing yourself from limiting beliefs. Um, selling is the highest paid profession. And thank God that we are a part of this profession. And thank God four times over that we're not selling something dirty, that we're selling something that we can be so proud of. Health, freedom, wealth, wellness, energy right? Thank God that we're in this profession, but we're selling something incredible. This is like double, double pow, <laughs> right? We, we've got a lot to be proud of. So we really have to work on getting out of this woe is me. If I hear another person say that they're not working their business because they have trouble organizing, this is what I do when my desk is disorganized. I take my arm, right? Watch this. This is serious. I do one foul swoop like this, and I throw everything in a cardboard box, and I say, I'll deal with that shit on Wednesday. Today, I got to work, right? Get over it. You got to get over it. You got to be in action.
Every day you got to be in action. And the more you do and the more you try and the more you come from a good place, the better you'll get. And guess what? I'm not afraid. I'm, I've gotten so good at it. I got a free yogurt today. <laughs> I mean, they have this great yogurt stand in the East Brunswick Mall. And I took my girl to a movie. And there's this beautiful little Asian girl. And every weekend she's there. She's maybe nine or ten. My kid couldn't work a yogurt stand the way this kid could. She's good. She's good. So I start talking to this little girl. How is your school year? How much does your teacher love you? Does your teacher know that you sell the best yogurts on the planet? And her dad gave us a free yogurt. You know, it's just, you just be nice to people. You talk to people. You take notice about the great qualities in somebody. It's not a ploy. I wasn't trying to enroll. <laughs> but it just the conversation will begin to flow much easier right so some things that we have to get better at friends i love yoga too except i was cleansing today lavish so my kid got it <laughs> but here's some things that we have to get good at we have to get good at recruiting right we have to get good at asking people questions if you don't ask great questions how will you get to the root of their pain Right? You want to know what, what they're going through so you can offer them a solution. You are the solutions man. They should make like a gangster movie or like a mobster movie about us, the solutioners. You know? but, and, and this is what we do. We offer people help for whatever issue they're going through in life. We can help. That's a big deal. But if you don't ask great questions, how do you know where they need the most assistance? Um, really standing. Um, in integrity and behind your word. If you tell your team to get on that call, you better be on that call. If you're promoting events, you better be sitting there front and center. Don't play with your phone. If you make a 9 p.m. appointment, you be there at 9 p.m. You know, my stepdad, before he died, he said, all someone has is their word. You know, you're born with it, you die with it. That's all a person has in this life is their good word. How, uh, how valuable is your word? When you tell someone that you're going to be there, are you going to be there? Right? So it really is about empowering ourselves, one another. Um, so Lisa talked a lot about limiting beliefs. And, you know, it's just, it's a constraint always. It, it holds us back from being the best version of ourselves and just believing in them. We don't even think about it, but verbally we say things that inhibit us, right? It, it kind of comes out naturally, these limiting beliefs. So we have to go to work to get over it. We have to go to work to become this new version of ourselves. Um, I'm a sabotager. I am a sabotager. That's what I've been um, trained to do. That's how I grew up. That's how I've uh, gotten attention from my family. I do really good, and then I have a tendency to F things up. You know what? You've got to work on that. You've, you've got to fix that about yourself. Because I'm telling you, it's going to be very painful when you make a million dollars and you lose it all because you never took the time to work on you. Self-development is a very important thing. Look at these professional people that make all this money and it's all gone because they never took the time to really work on themselves, to build a respect for money, to learn the value of money, you know? Um, so limiting beliefs, Lisa talked about, I lack motivation, I procrastinate too much, I don't have time, I don't have the resources, it's too late, I'm too old for this shit, I have too many responsibilities, I have no friends, I don't know anyone. I mean, how many of us have heard this before? Have you guys ever heard any of these? Have you guys ever said any of these? Yeah. Could you agree that it's all BS? Yeah. It's, it's really, it's nonsense. You either do or you don't, but you get to choose, right? You get to decide. So we're going to give a fun homework assignment. Um, and that's really going to be to write down the limiting beliefs and the limiting fears that you have. Really play detective and follow your thoughts. Really let this be an emotional discovery um, of things that are holding you back. And every time you find yourself thinking one, Kelly Calabrese posted that someone has 65 thoughts, 65,000 thoughts 
throughout the course of a day, right? That's pretty, how many of those thoughts are limiting? How many of those are nonsense that we tell ourselves? So walk around with a little um, notebook or you can even take notes in your phone. But every time you find yourself saying something like that, document it, document it. And you know, it, it's a good way to tally all the negative things and all the negative thoughts that you tell yourself throughout the course of a day, a week. Um, so put them on paper and really stare at them and start noting how strong each belief is and what emotion it elicits and where this is coming from. Because most of these are just things that are made up. Yeah, you have to be accountable to yourself because nobody's going to make you do this. Nobody can inspire you. You know, everyone has a chance to make a million bucks, to change the world, to open up an orphanage. We're all capable of doing magnificent things. But will we all be here? Look, 250 people signed up for Blitz. We had to can some. We told some they couldn't join because we were packed. And look at how many people show up each week. I'm going to be one of those that shows up every week. You get to decide if you will too. And that's how you have to stand. Don't worry about what they're doing. Worry about what you do each and every week. I used to look through the screen and see who of my people was there and who didn't show up. I don't do that anymore. If they're here, God bless them. They've got a great opportunity. If they're not here, I'll find someone that will. That's how you have to think about that. Stop counting boxes. <laughs> but so step one, writing down the beliefs. Step two, acknowledge that these beliefs are simply not true. They're often the hardest step, but you have to say to yourself that my limitations are not real. It's a choice that comes into place. And defending your, most of us defend our limitations to death. We will fight for our limitations. How dare you say I have more time in a day? I'm a mom. I've got laundry. I've got 12 kids. You know what? I, listen, Carolyn Tweetmeyer has like 15 kids by adoption. Uh, a few of them have Down syndrome. I mean, this woman's got her hands full. She started with me. She's an isogenics millionaire. There's no excuses. You either do or you don't. Don't fight for those beliefs. Acknowledge them, face them, get over them, and throw them in the garbage, right? Um, so when arguing for our limitations, we get to keep them. <laughs> but when we don't argue for them and we realize that they're so silly, we get to really just <sighs> exhale and let them go. Um, step three is really to try on a different belief. Who do you want to be? Who's going to be the new Jody? How do you want Jody to show up every day? How do you see Ophelia? How do you picture Sophia to be? Right? Um, use your imagination and try on a belief that is aligned with the person that you want to be. It might be something like my financial difficulties in the past have now taught me so much that I'm fully prepared to handle them. Or, you know what, my past doesn't um, dictate who I get to be tomorrow. I'm going to use my past and become a stronger, braver, more person and help others get out of their funk, right? Use those things to grow you and help others. And be vulnerable. Be honest about it. We all have crap. Nobody relates to a picture-perfect someone. They don't. I don't relate to someone who's posting pictures that they're out to lunch with, uh, I don't know, with Cher. That, to me, that's not relatable. I relate more to a mom who's sitting like this, stressed out, saying, what am I going to do with my kid? They're driving me nuts. You know, be very real. That's who people relate to. Um, so the trick is to go beyond saying it and really want to step into that new self. And quite honestly, guys, there's so many YouTube videos and books and documents. You know, Lisa wanted to go vegan. She learned everything about it, the best way how to do it, how to ease her children into it. You know, if your limiting belief is uh, fear of rejection, you Google, you YouTube, you watch every video that you can think of that has to do with fighting, you know, that fear of rejection and becoming stronger. Because when you can pinpoint what your weakness is and work on it and work on it and work on it. I heard a, a boxer say that, you know, he didn't want to um, work on his legs. 
that's where he was the weakest. I don't know if you know the story, if I'm totally butchering it from, but what I remember, this boxer went to the gym every day and wanted to work on his jabs. And his trainer said, you got to work on your legs. And he's like, why do I have to work on my legs? You have to. You know, the, the weakest part needs to be your strongest part. The part that you hate to discipline is the part that needs disciplining the most. Right. So we've we've got to own it and we really do have to embrace it. And step four is to try different actions. And that's where we're going to challenge you guys this week. Um, it's going to feel scary, but you've got to act as if your new belief is true. Right. Um, in other words, if you were really the kind of man that women adore, how would you act at parties? Who might ask you out? Um, if you're capable and have learned a tremendous amount from uh, past financial difficulties, what steps would you take today, you know, to, to um, be that new person? Um, so really, if you're the kind of person who eats healthy food, what are you going to put in your grocery cart? If you're the kind of person that says, I'm going to be a seven figure income earner, what are you going to do to behave like a seven figure income earner? I don't think somebody like Lynn Hagedorn says, eh, at an appointment with her, I'll blow her off. I'll call them tomorrow. I just, I don't see them. I don't, I see that the people who are successful have a tremendous amount of discipline, right? And they do, whether they want to or not, they do, they do. And they develop that muscle and the fear little by little subsides. So we're going to uh, write, write out the assignment, but it's going to be a challenging assignment. We're all here for blitz. You, you want to grow your business. Here, here's a little secret. You got to bring people into your business to grow, to cycle, to make money, right? Events are wonderful. The calls are great, but we're here to make you work. So I want you guys to go out there, right? You're lions this week, right? This week we took on a whole new self. Now we're going to be fighting these beliefs. We're going to be changing our limitations. We're going to face the fears. So we're, we're going to make you guys talk to a lot of people this week, a lot of people. And we're going to ask you to speak on the call next week and talk about your experiences. I think it's going to be important to really get out of this um, thing. So many of us hide behind this thing. And th there's no more hiding, right? You, you got to come clean. You got to be honest. You got to really talk about the things that you've been doing. Because when someone tells me that they haven't enrolled anyone in three months, but they're talking to five people a day, either the people that they're talking to don't have a pulse or they're not really talking, right? So we really want you to be successful. We want you guys to get into action. So I'm going to pass it over to Lisa. Um, and I'll type up the assignment real fast. But we're, we're going we're gonna to get uncomfortable. This is going to be the week. I love it. Angela, thank you so much. You, you give everybody permission to be real and to, to let their garbage out. And I, I, I just, I'm inspired by you every time I listen to you. I, I, I love it. I love it. And I know everybody here does. And, Ditto. Um, you bring the goods, girl. I love this. Um, so I wanted to say one thing, and this was really ironic. I logged into Healthy Mind and Body today at day 56 for me. And the, the opening line was, we find that when people move from belief and focus to capability, there's no stopping them. In fact, when you change any limiting belief to an abundant belief and then focus on what you're capable of, you have about a 95% chance of seeing the results you're looking for. That's good. That's I love. Isn't that amazing? And yeah. I don't, I, I, Monique typed in there earlier and it, it's, it never ceases to amaze her that every time um, she hops on one of these Zoom calls, it's exactly what she needed. And I, I absolutely feel like the universe delivers exactly what you need. And to keep in mind that when the universe delivers a plate full of shit, that you needed it. You needed to see it, you needed to work through it, and you needed to move past it so that you could become a better person. I have had many plates full of shit, which is why I'm vegan now. Um, I, I have absolutely, and I, and it's, you know, 
I want to tell people that I wanted, to, I've had a very difficult life. I've had a lot of shit thrown at me yeah. um, and I could be a victim. I could wallow in that shit and I could, I could ride that. I could ride it. I mean, we've had a lot of bad things that have happened to us, including if you guys know our story with the babies, we could, we could sit back and just feel sorry for ourselves, but we don't, we rise above, we learn from it. We become stronger from it. I know every single one of you here has been faced with adversity and you've wrote, risen above it and you feel so much better that you were able to have that hindsight and, and move forward from that. Um, so I, I love this subject matter tonight. I love our homework assignment. I also want to encourage people, if you are not doing healthy mind and body, do it, do it, do it. I'm on round seven. I keep doing it. I am going to do it until I have mastered it. It is about creating new habits. It's about changing your identity. It's about becoming a better person. And I am never going to be satisfied with the person I am. I'm always going to want to be a better person. So I'm never going to stop doing healthy mind and body. Just completing it once did not make me a better person. Maybe a little bit, but seven times, you better believe I'm a better person than when the first time I started healthy mind and body. I am always going to keep doing it. And I encourage everybody, if you haven't taken a look at it, get in there and do it. And it is uncomfortable. It's 60 days of plugging in and having to do something every day. And I'm not perfect. I forget to log in sometimes and I beat myself up the next day. Or I've forgotten for like seven days in a row. And then that day that I log in and do those seven days, I'm in like a shitty mood and I go in and I do it and I feel amazing afterwards. And I'm like, oh my God, this is just what I needed. So absolutely get in there and check that out. You know, I just have to mention that, you know, when you guys, you know, Lisa had had a, a difficult life, not easy, and she kind of pulled herself out of the shit, quote unquote. Guess what? The friends that are still stuck in it, they're going to be hating on you. Yep. They're going to be like, oh, she thinks she's better than me. But, but you know what? You, I'm prepping you right now. When you start changing, people are not going to like it. But that has nothing to do with the beautiful person that you're becoming. It's because they're still stuck and they haven't grown, right? So when you start changing and when you start growing and when you start getting better and people start talking smack, you just, you're not trying to be better than anybody else. You're just trying to be better than the person you were then. And if they can't respect that, I'm still the same old Ange, <laughs> it, but people have an opinion. But you know what? I, I saw a really great quote and it says, with your opinion, which one of my bills do you plan to pay? <laughs> <laughs> and, and when they decide to pay my bills, they're entitled to their opinion. But in the meantime, it's up to me to be rock solid and strong. It's up to me to build my belief and my strength in, in myself, letting the past go. Some of us have a really crappy um, understanding of money. Some of us, you know, have a really crappy understanding of how we treat our body. Some of us have terrible behaviors where we constantly are sabotaging ourselves. The minute we take three steps forward, we take five steps back. Let's figure out why we do these things to ourselves and why we're holding ourselves back from really being the person that we're designed to be. Because their opinions don't matter. You want to wake up. You want to think good about yourself and feel good about yourself. And you want to just make yourself proud. Even if it's a small activity, even if you say, you know what, Ange, today, no matter what, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to talk to three strangers today. I don't, I'm going to do it. I'm going to challenge myself and I'm going to do it. It's not about the enrollment. It's about pushing your boundaries. It's about challenging yourself. And when you do it, you're going to be laying in bed like this. You're just going to be so proud of yourself that you did it. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to be high. That shit is going to make you high. You're going to go out the next day and you're going to say, you know what? I'm going to go out and I'm going to talk to three more. And, and that's what happens. You become brave. And, and it becomes intoxicating and you want more of it and you like it and you like the person that you're becoming, right? And it, it, you find fulfillment. It's not the money that's fulfilling. It's the lives that we're impacting. It's the friends we're making. It's the changes that you're making in yourself. It's the person that you are today. 
very different from who I was yesterday. Very different. It has nothing to do with the money or where I live. It, it really just is, a, a, is about a grander picture. I had no idea what the heck a legacy meant. And now I do. A legacy for your family. Can you imagine something that, will, that you get to leave behind? You're like Walt Disney, man. You're leaving a legacy for your family. Something, you know, just incredible. Something tangible that decades and decades, long after you're gone, people can look back and say, wow, look at what that Lisa did. You know, look at what that Sophia accomplished. This is something very big. And we can't take it lightly. And if something as small and as silly as fear is in my way, I'm going to stomp it. I'm going to crush it. I'm going to break it. I need to get over it. Because there really is a magnificent life waiting on the other side. We've seen it. We've all been to these events. We hear these stories from rags to riches. This is available for all of us. Right? So how many of us are ready to really get out there and tackle these fears, these beliefs, these silly things that are holding us back? Yeah. Angela, I want to add in there too that you're not only, you know, creating this legacy as far as this business is concerned, but every time you face one of your fears or your limiting beliefs or challenge yourself with a new goal and you reach it, you're creating that mindset in your family and for your children. Uh, you know, Josh and I are experience, experiencing this right now. Our, our oldest, Caleb, grew up with us doing this and was exposed to it. He has no fear of sharing this because that's the way he grew up. And, the, and he has no doubt in his mind that this system works because he's seen it work with us. We're creating an environment for our children that we can be happy people. We can overcome struggles in life. We can overcome our fears. We can go out there and grab what we want in life. And that right there, I don't care how much money we ever make in this business, what we're setting up for our children as far as mindset and what they are capable in life, that is our legacy. That is what we want to do. Yeah, 100%. And it's funny when you look at the income that some of these isogenics people are making, I mean, it's equivalent to that of the president of the United States. It's equivalent to that of a brain surgeon, except you're doing it, you know, braless from home in your pajama. <laughs> so um, it's just, it's, it's fascinating. I'm so thankful every day to be a part of it. And if sometimes you forget how special it is, call somebody because we can all use a reminder. And, and going back on Facebook and seeing all the stuff that's occurred in the past four years, you know, use those reminders. Keep a journal, keep a gratitude journal. It, it really is a, a big deal to reflect and, and see how incredible this truly is. Yeah. So hey, Angela. Yeah. Can we, can we do one more closing thought on this? And sure. I know that um, one of the things that I was thinking about when you were talking about, um, you know, being in that positive mindset and having that that good mood i know that when we're having a good week and we're putting out those positive vibes and people are enrolling that more will come yeah. and so like we're josh and i are having a killer week we've got this great stuff and then like all of a sudden all these like people just keep pming saying hey i want to join your company and we're like Whoa. <laughs> but can we talk a tiny bit about the after effect on that because we can have an amazing week one week and then next week <clears throat> nothing yeah. and i know that that can derail a lot of people and i know that you have some good tricks on this too and i i think that that might be a good valuable piece for people tonight um to how to deal with with the the calm after the storm yeah so um like any business isogenics has its highs and isogenics has its lows so can anyone guess what the first busiest month of the year is January. Yeah, Jody said January. Okay, that's the first busiest month. And what would be the second busiest month? Anyone take a guess? April? Yeah, March, April, spring break, right? It's a long, cold winter. It's going to start getting warm out. People want to do spring break. And then what would be the next busiest month? Right? Memorial Day weekend, January. And then we have the last busiest month would be September. 
right? So like any, um, any business, we have highs and we have lows, right? We have during the holidays, November, the cycles might be down a little. People are thinking Thanksgiving, they've got to spend money for Christmas. What happens after eating and binging Thanksgiving and Christmas? You look down, you can't see your belly button. You're like, holy shit, New Year's resolution. I got to do a class. So January goes up. But when it goes up in January, who do you think they, they're going to call? Who do you think they're going to, do you think they're just going to pop out of the woodwork in January and Lisa's going to get 18, eight, Ed said I enrolled 18 people my first January. It's true, but guess what? You know why I enrolled 18 people? Because I was busy working October, November, December, right? So it's planting seeds. The people who are successful are the ones who are planting seeds during their off months. So then when you have those busy months, it's because you put in the work and the follow-ups and the conversations and those flowers are ready to bloom. That's all it is. People sit around and they're like, yeah, January will be busy. And you get zero enrollments because you did no talking in December. I don't care how much weight you gain. I don't care how many cycles you make. I don't care what the story is. It's just the story. You keep talking and you keep sharing this gift with people. If you think you have something special, right? You got to keep talking to people. I feel that I can't walk by someone without telling them. I feel that I'm doing someone a disservice, a sin, if I don't tell them about it. Because I see someone struggling. I see someone who can benefit. And by you not telling them, it's, you know, why shouldn't they know? Why is it only good enough for you? And that's how I, I just talk to everyone. This week was a total bust for me. And I'm telling you guys, while I was sitting here just waiting for the call, I just shot, shot out a few follow-up messages. I reached out to, to people on the team. I'm sorry, I had a rough week. Let's reschedule for this week. Jeanette is my witness, right? I messaged her. Let's find the time to chat. I messaged Julie. I said, the promo's over tonight. She said, let's do it. I got to sign up. Julie didn't just pop out of nowhere. Julie is someone I've been talking to for two years. <laughs> So it really is about being consistent and it's really about keeping your head in the game. I mean, I tell everyone, I don't care if I get five enrollments this week or zero, I'm not going to stop doing what I do. And it's, I mean, look, like look within yourself. And now that I've pointed it out, pay attention to it, right? On the week that you enroll three to five people, you're walking around like hot stuff, like your shit don't stink. You're like, yeah, I got this. I'm the network marketing queen, right? You're feeling pumped up. Take note of that. And then all of a sudden, the next week, you had zero enrollments and you're questioning everything you know. Maybe this is not for me. Maybe this is, why? Why do you let enrollments dictate who you are and what you do? The activity should never change. The activity stays the same. Three conversations, three new friends, three follow-ups. No matter what. Is that what you guys do, Lisa? No matter what, always stays the same. Absolutely. And, and a tip I would give everyone is pretend like next week is free enrollment week every week because it's not the work you're doing this week that's yeah. going to dictate what happens this week. It's something that you did 30 days ago, 60 days ago, 90 days ago. So if every week is treated like there's a big promotion coming next week, you'll have that those people there and ready to go. And, and this happened to one of our teammates. Um, she said to me, she goes, I got to remember that, you know, on a free enrollment week, I'm not going to reach out and tell everybody, oh yeah, it's free enrollment, get signed up now. It's because I wasn't talking to them last week or the week before that I can't now call them and say, hey, there's free, there's free enrollment. Are you ready to get going? Yeah. Because I hadn't started the conversation yet. Yeah, a hundred percent. And you know, what's funny is that the activity that you do today also rolls down into your team in 90 days. So if you implement something new and you're like, okay, we are doing welcome calls for everyone. We're going to make them feel awesome on day one. We're going to do those via three way, or we're going to do a five day phone call. I'm going to have one of the upline it, do the U plus two on day five, whatever activity you begin today, will reflect in your team 90 days from now. It takes time to roll through. So if you think that you haven't done a good job or if you think you could have done something different or something better, guess what? Do it today. Forgive yourself. 
You know, if you're like, oh man, I had a rough month. I wasn't a good coach. Okay, start being a good coach tomorrow. No harm done, no harm, no foul. And everything that goes wrong, everything that's happened to me, I always use it as a lesson to teach my team. If you skin your knees, you owe it to us to tell us what you did wrong so we don't make that same mistake. Learn from each other's mistakes. Listen to each other. I, I listen to so many podcasts, so many events, and I always learn something um, just incredible. And I tell you, every mistake that I've made, I hope someone else found value in it. You know, So even when you do fall on your face, it's a good thing because <laughs> maybe you'll prevent others from, from doing the same. But there's nothing, you know, you're not a, a heart surgeon. There's no mistake here that's irreversible. You've done nothing wrong. If you were a bad coach, it's never too late to say, Mary, you know what? I was brand new. I did a terrible job. Give me another chance. I've gotten a lot better. I've learned a lot more. Come with me to the event. I would love to show you what I've learned. Or give me another chance. I'd love an opportunity to walk you through the program again. And I think somebody would respect that, your sincerity and your vulnerability. And I'm probably a much better coach now than I was back then. I didn't know what I was doing. Ed says a little bit. Ed says a tiny little bit. I used to just slap spaghetti against the wall and hope somebody would stick. That was it. We used to assume that people would coach themselves just because they had a guide. Yeah, I didn't think it was that tough. I'm just add water. But you know what? Jay, Jay Bennett gave the talk on stage where the lady called him and she's like, it's not working. I'm hungry. And he's like, Mary, what do you do? And she goes, I took the scooper from the cleanse container and I put it in the isoline shake and I did the two scoops, but it tastes watery. He's like, Mary, you use the cleanse scoop for the shakes? <laughs> so listen, there's a reason why John Anderson, yeah, I guess there's a reason why John Anderson did not put this on the shelves at GNC. This is meant to have a coach. This is meant to have support. This is meant to have um, love and guidance. So it's never too late to be a better uh, version of yourself and, and help someone and take someone with you. Okay, so does anyone have any questions or comments or anything they would like to add to this call? I do, I do. Yes, please. Who is this? Hi, this is um, Megan Adair's dad, Tom Favell. Hello, Tom, how are you? All right, uh, first, sorry to get on late. I was driving, well, a friend was driving me back from Syracuse. What I learned this week really fast, I had uh, four presentations. And you say plant the seeds, I believe that's what I did. Something I learned, however, is to speak to both spouses at the same time. And I was speaking to my prior students, wrestlers, football players, lacrosse players, and their wives were not available, but I wanted to, you know, start those conversations. So now what I'm going to be doing this week is speaking with them and their spouse. Tell me why so that you was, think that's a good tip. Tell me why you think speaking to both parties is beneficial. Uh, well, from my experience, yes. uh, it allows them to now have the conversation with each other with me there. And so now if there's a question that, spouse has, I could then go to my upline and say, hey, let me make a call to the ex expert to, you know, help us with this. Wonderful. And and the other thing is, it maximizes my time with that couple at that moment. So when one of them is in the space, now the other one can get in the same space to uh, launch yeah, I love it. And most of the time, somebody when you're speaking to someone via phone, they'll say, well, I have to ask my wife what, what her thoughts are. But if the wife is there, you can really, you know, feel her out exactly. and play, play to both parties. That's a wonderful tip. Next time I have someone who's interested who says, I want my husband to do the program, I will say, let's do a three-way call together with you and your husband on the call because you might find right. some value in it too. That's a great tip, Tom. Thank you. You see? And thank you guys. Thank you guys. 
Thank you. And it's better to show up late than never. Right. Right. <laughs> Thank you for your share. Thank does, you. Does anyone else have any um, takeaways from tonight's call? Anything that they would like to share? That was a good tip. <laughs> okay, nobody's gonna um, give their takeaways. Lisa, call out a number, one through okay. five, one through 10. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Jennifer Cody. <laughs> I'm gonna start calling on people. I'm not kidding. <laughs> the only way we're gonna learn is from each other. Oh no. <laughs> what was your takeaway, Jen, off the bat? Well, just fear is, is huge. I mean, you know, that's, that's everything with me right now. I've had a tough week, I've had a really tough week. Um, but overcoming the fear and, and writing it down, I mean, that's, that's something I haven't done is actually writing it down when it's in the moment. Yes. I, I, I've been spending a lot of time being in the moment, trying to talk myself out of it and try to like, you know, tell myself, oh, that's bullshit, just move on, you know, or whatever. Um, and sometimes it happens pretty quickly. I'm able to get over it. And sometimes it's not that easy. So um and that and rejection i think you know it's, it's going to be a constant thing but you know recognizing it is definitely helpful so this just like i i don't know who said it but these calls same thing with me it's like every time i show up it's like it's exactly what i need to hear at the exact right moment <laughs> so i thank you guys again for a great call yeah but you said you know like uh what what i I forgot the exact words that you used, but you were like, it's something constant. It's something that, you know, I constantly have to deal with. But um, that's a choice. Just mm -hmm. know that's a choice. It, it's going to be constant until you decide that it's not going to be constant anymore. Mm. You know, and for, for most people, getting out of that is just by being in action. You know, with Tony Robbins, mm -hmm. it's a noise, loud noise. Every time yeah. in that bunk, you just clap it up get up or or put put on a song you the know? movement yeah. yeah movement music movement. Sound, vibration breaking yep. that state immediately breaking that state mm -hmm. and you feel funky you put on your favorite song you get up and you dance kathy coover drives mm -hmm. to work in her little porsche cranking rihanna work okay <laughs> make sure picture that scene and i'm i'm not kidding you but that's what Tony Robbins is all about. Energy, state, being in that positive vibe because that's where you produce the most. So the minute you catch yourself being in that state, boom, get, get, oh, it's, it's going to be constant until you decide that it's not going to be constant anymore. But that's what we mm -hmm. want you guys to know is that you get to decide. So um, one, two, three, four, five, Deborah Cohen. <laughs> Let's let's get some takeaways, Deb. What was bit what hit home for you tonight? So the, you know the biggest takeaway is you know if you're down and out, you had a bad week, you had a bad day, just go. You're the CEO of your own company. Just it's it's okay. We are blessed to be in this in this profession, and you know we have team members to help us out. Um, above, I know you're not supposed to ask above, but I do. Above, below, it's all together. And it's okay. Regroup yourself and think about why that happened and be a better version. You know, I, I was texting Ina during this call tonight and I said, I don't think that deep. Like, you know, I hear Lisa and I hear you, Angela, and I don't, I don't think that deep. I've been in this a long time and I've had my ups and downs and I've had my I can't do this anymore, and all the all the things that you said. Um, I'm too tired. I'm too. I just turned sixty this year, and oh, I don't know anyone who wants to start a business, and that my friends are retiring, and all that bullshit. It's it's the noise in my head. It's yes. the noise in my head, and for me, um, I have to do more personal development, and because of Ina. And because of you, I am going to commit to be doing Landmark. That is my very big thing. Oh, I'm yeah. going to be doing that. And, um, you know, I mean, listen, it's, what time is it? It's a quarter to 11. I have a migraine headache. I want to sleep. But I didn't get off the call. I stayed on the call because I'm committed. I'm committed to 
bettering myself, bettering my team, and making it happen. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, Deb. And this is someone who's been in it for a while, and she's still working on herself, and she still hears the noises. You know, this is something that's going to come up, but it comes up less and less and less. Like for those of us that hate going to the gym, some of us will never love going to the gym, but the pain of going to the gym on a Monday just gets easier and easier and easier. It becomes habitual. Um, so let's take one more. One, two, three, four, five. How about Paul's iPad? Let's hear from Paul's iPad. <laughs> Paul's iPad. Hey, Paul. Just like that, I'm unmuted. Oh, boy. Just like that, buddy. <laughs> so I think, in, you know, it happens to me all the time. And, you know, free enrollment comes out and you have nobody. I have nobody to follow up with. My only, you know, my only recourse is throw a bunch of posts out on Facebook. You know, maybe you can get somebody interested. Maybe you can fast track them into, you know, being an associate, get them signed up but it never works. And what you said about, you know, taking 90 days to roll through, to me, that's huge because it's so true. I mean, I haven't had a business builder underneath me since I started. Everybody's been a product user. I had one guy said that he was ready to start. We really didn't do anything. Um, and I finally have one guy that's active. He's enthusiastic. He wants to do this. You know, we did a health and wellness fair today. We're going to do a launch party at his house. I got lined up with two other women who are on two other different teams for the next town over. We're going to do a launch party. We got Susan Wheeler involved and everything else. And now it's, it's go time. Yeah. You know, it really is. And I really have to get myself out of that funk of not taking action, you know, just coming home and saying, you know, geez, I'm beat. You know, I've got a brain fog. I can take an hour and a half lunch at work if I want to, to do this instead. And I can work late instead. You know, I have the freedom to move my schedule around to make this thing work. I know it. It's taken me a while to realize it. I need to put it on paper, put it on my schedule so that, um, you know, I know what I have to do when I have to do it. You know, yeah. and for the past three, four weeks, how many, how many weeks have we been on this call already? I scramble at 927 looking for the, uh, looking for the Zoom code, you know. <laughs> so so <do> <laughs> <laughs> so I finally have it down on an index card and I'm pasting it right up on the wall next to me so I can just look at it and say, all right, you know, yeah. trying to get a little bit more independent. But you know what, Paul, I have to acknowledge you and give you some props for admitting that because this is most of us. This is how most of us go through life. But you know what? Something magical happens when you write it down and you pencil it in. That's why people, even with great physiques, hire a fitness trainer because mm -hmm. when you schedule an appointment with with them you show up for them if i said i'm just gonna go walk on the treadmill who knows maybe i'll show up maybe i won't it's like the lotto you know like you never know what's good but when i have an appointment set in stone with a trainer i don't want to disappoint them so maybe you're right plugging the notes setting the time you know having a little bit more discipline but think about it this way it's september you have a hundred conversations in September, October, November. Guess who's going to be the one in January with all those flowers blooming? You, because you're putting in all that work. And you're going to be so thankful in January that you did put in 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there, that you did uh, sacrifice your lunch hour to put in the time. You're going to be grateful. You know, if you didn't do that work yesterday, would you have that business builder with you today? Because people also come to you because of how, um, how they feel about you. If somebody sees this guy, Paul, he's serious. He's not quitting. He's not going anywhere. This is somebody I can get behind because I feel him. You know, it, it really also comes from you finding these build, business builders. When people sense it in mm -hmm. you, your belief, your strength, your attitude, they're, they want to lock arms with you. If you're like, eh. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Who knows? You never know. Right. <laughs> you know, people, yeah. I don't want to sign up with someone flaky. I wouldn't hire a trainer who's, you know, showing up at the gym eating McDonald's. I'd be like, who the hell is this guy training? You know? Uh, no, I just realized yesterday, if you look at 80, you know, 84% of the people in the company are product users. Yeah. You know, about 11 and a half, you know, share it. And only five are building a business. And I'm like, yeah, I'm building a business. 
Yeah. And they call the 11 and a half percent fans, they're fans of the company. They share it. And I kind of made a realization that I'm being nothing but a fan. I'm sharing it, but I'm not really building a business. Yeah. I'm really not. You know, yeah. I show up for the phone calls, you know, show up for the Zoom calls. But what do I do the rest of the week? Nothing. Yeah. You not know, enough. I won't say nothing. I don't do enough. I uh, saw a great quote. I'm hoping that I can find it um, here in my group. I posted it today in my um, uh, leadership group, but it, it, re it just reminded me what we were talking about. I hope I can find it real quick. Um, it, there really is a, a difference in um, being committed to this. Let me see if I can find it. Um, the, the, I mean, tell me if you hear a difference in this. I don't care what I have to go through. I don't care the price I have to pay. I'm all in, right? It's, it, that, that is a very powerful to me. I'm going to pay the price. I'm going to get to the event. I'm going to do whatever I have to do to be successful. It's a lot more powerful than yeah, I'm kind of dipping one toe in at a time. I'm testing the waters. You know, there, there's a, an urgency. And, and what I think is this, you have to be willing to pay the price each and every day. You have to deal with the embarrassment, the awkwardness uh, and the fears because people can truly tell if you're dabbling or if you're all in, right? So if you want to find business builders, are you playing the part of a business builder? And I tell you something, those 83% product users, that's not too shabby. Because if you have a team big enough of product users and a cookies and cream shakes comes out, you still having a $13,000 a week, my friends. And maybe what would be beneficial for you and your team is just to get them to share. Maybe they can be the 11%. I learned something very valuable from Susan Sly, and I teach this to my team. In the very beginning, on day one, I asked them, you're going to have great results, and people are really going to notice. Where do you see yourself? A, I would be happy to take your referrals and do a darn good job coaching them. B, I can show you how to get the products for free if you really love them. Or C, I can teach you how to make a little bit of money or a lot of bit of money? That's up to you. Where do you see yourself? And I put that right out there. Because even if someone's not interested in building a business with you, Paul, they know two humans. Maybe they can just tell them, right? And you can coach them, you can help them, you can come in for the assist, but you got yourself a consultant. You, you, you get enough of those, you get enough of those 11 percenters, and you've got yourself to executive. And now you're participating in the pools. You've got that 10% executive match. It's a big deal. So don't look for, um, let's say, this gold star. Out of 25,000 people on my team, I have maybe two or three of those gold stars that are like, whoosh. The rest are just going, just going at their own pace where they're comfortable. And that's okay with me. It'll still get you to 200 cycles a week. Right? Yeah. So thank you for that share. I thought it was a great, great share. And I guarantee that at the end of this 12 weeks, you're going to be totally different. I see it already. Look at this. You wrote the Zoom on an index card. That's a step <laughs> in the right direction. <laughs> That's it. I got a stack of them right here. <laughs> That's it. Thank you, Paul. You're great. Um, Thank you, so does anyone else have any questions or comments or anything that they want to share before we um, say good night? Lisa, they're like, oh, for the love of God, just say good night already. We're hanging on by a thread. <laughs> have a wonderful week. You guys are amazing. The assignment will be posted in the group in a few minutes. Thank you so much, Lisa. You're fantastic. Love you, Mama. Love you, girl. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you, Angela. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you.